capital. And so what we tend to do is help them access how much capital you will need to start that business. That could be a daunting task because many times you don't have no clue. You know, this is something that you love to do. Say, you know, you've you have a, a patent or you've come up with the, an invention, but you really don't know how much it maybe take in capital to commercialize it to bring it to market. We're gonna we'll help you through that process along the way and help you raise the capital to actually need it. We will look at operate your business until you are cash flow positive. So we will do break even analysis with you to show you what what you will need based on the pricing structure that you've created. How many widgets, if, if you will, use that as an example, will it take you to break even before you make a profit? We're going to look at all that. We're going to we'll look at getting the funding that you need to put into place. We're also going to encourage you to consider other ways, which we which most people call bootstrap your business until it's proven that the ideals it will be excess. Where you asking family and friends and others taking from your savings and things of this nature to actually say, I want to bring the concept forward just to say it's proven before I take it to market, before I've actually put in a high level of. Depending on what type of business you're looking at, you know, if you're looking at, you know, uh, a biotech company or technology, a, me a medical device company and things of nature, you have to come up with a prototype, you know, looking at saying, I want to prove that what I have can work in the market and now I want to commercialize it. Well, in any scenario, in any business, it's only two ways that a business is actually funded. It's the capital markets called equity. And venture capital, so it's private equity, venture capitalists, which we call equity, or is it taking on debt, a debt instrument, going to a financial institution, commercial bank, and asking them, hey, I want to borrow X and Z money at five or six percent interest rate over a five year period of time. I need a hundred thousand dollars. It's a quick debt instrument. The bank will turn around and tell you, do you have a business plan? And in particular, I will tell you the way the underwriting decision is actually made at a bank. It is through the profit and loss statement. And I'll give you a little bit of clue about underwriting of a bank. When you put together or your accountant puts together your profit and loss statement, it minimally the net income has to show 10% or higher. If it does not, you're automatically denied. That is an inside underwriting banking rule that the government has established on our banking underwriting in this country. So if you were doing your financials or someone is doing your financials and you look at all the expenses, if you take on debt and you have your principal interest payment and the last line EBITDA or net income is 10% or higher, you have a very good chance of your ideal being funded, whether it's a startup, or an existing business, it doesn't matter. 10% or higher is the rule to underwriting debt financing. When it comes to equity, angel investments, uh, venture capitalists, it is truly the ideal, the, the problem solver of that product or that service that is attractive to those investors willing to take the risk on the ideal that you've come up with. It's the belief that there's some good in this. When you look at uh, pharmaceutical companies with a new drug that may save uh, someone from pain management or some kind of debilitating disease, many uh, philanthropists, angel investors, or even if the market is large enough, venture capitalists and private equity firms would want to look at that. Good example, um, the four um, manufacturers that are chasing the coronavirus vaccine, you know, Moderna, Pfizer, um, and the two others, very well established. But there's actually 10 companies that many Americans don't even know their names that have the possibility of coming up with a cure of the coronavirus as well. So we know that you don't have to necessarily be first out the gate. 
to make large sum of money when you have a global pandemic and you have a solution that will garner the attention of private investment um, no matter where you are. And so this will probably help you with that or coming in our par department, we will help you disseminate that information. Lastly, what I want to talk to you all about is what is the startup checklist that you actually need? What is the process that you should be looking at? What do I do after I get off this webinar, Joe? What's next? Well, the first thing I want you to do is register for free assistance by going to our website at ctsbdc.com. That's the Connecticut Small Business Development Center dot com for free advisement. When you go to our website, you will just click on the upper right hand corner. There will be a little yellow box. I think it says COVID advising right now, but it's actually just advising for any and everyone. You press on that. If you are a pre-venture, meaning you have not yet started your business and you need help, you'll scroll down and check pre-venture. If you're an existing business, you will check on in business. And it's a simple registration process that you will go through. And the only thing you're, we're looking for is the information about who you are, where you are, what stage you are, and where you're trying to go. What other product or service? Pretty much, you're now registered with our department. The next phase of starting up a, a, a new business is registering with the state in which you plan to do business. So at the Secretary of State's office, you can go and look up information. So I'm going to say, do you have a name for your business? You may say yes. Joe, Joe ABC Company. OK, we're going to tell you to go and direct you to the Secretary of State's office or to Concord, C-O-N-C-O-R-D, -C -O Concord, to look up the business services unit. For an LLC, which is the most commonly used, and it's a limited liability corporation, is the most widely used uh, business formation here in the state of Connecticut. It is only $120 to apply for that. Um, it gives you a measure of protection. Um, that's why it's called limited liability. And it gives you the corporate status some LLCs work as sole um, partners or sole um, individuals. Some work and, and, and are set up as S corporations as an LLC specifically. This website will allow you to not only look and see if this, your business name is available, but it'll also allow you to access and create your legal existence. If you want to be a B corporation or benefit corporation, you can do, find it there. If you want to be an LLP, which is a limited liability partnership, or an S or C corporation, you can do all of this at the Secretary of State's website. We in our department can help and walk you right through that process. It's about 15 minutes, and you can be up and running in business. The next step to once you've been and have created your legal existence, you want to contact irs.gov. Why are we doing that? The IRS is the individual federal department that handles your EIN. What is the EIN? The EIN is your federal tax number of a business. Think of your EIN much like your individual social security number. The EIN is the actual number the federal government tracks corporations in America for tax purposes. Now, what else is next? Well, we have the state of Connecticut. We live in the state of Connecticut. We use the resource state of Connecticut. You have to also apply for a Connecticut tax registration number through the Department of Revenue Services in Hartford. You can go online and can access that information. Also, depending on certain um, businesses such as contractors and alike, you may need a license or a permit to operate your business. And we will help you through that process. If you're taking on uh, employees, 
You want to be in contact with the Department of Labor. Um, with that, as you know, during this pandemic, uh, we've, we've had something called the Paycheck Protection Plan, and it kind of coincided with those workers that were laid off receiving an extra payment from our government. That all comes through the Department of Labor. Um, and so we want to make sure that you're set up properly there as far as your employees are concerned. We will also inform you of other state and federal regulations, such as zoning and local requirements, because certain municipalities, there's 169 here in the state of Connecticut, each have a little bit different way of how they conduct business within their particular town. Case in point, if I was to build a building and it was in a residential part of the city, I may have to get a special variant or go to the zoning board for permission to build in that particular area, just for an example. Also, we like to talk, if you take thinking about um, you have an invention and you think you need a patent or a trademark or you want to have a copyright, or something of nature, we will put you in touch with the USPTO office in Middletown at the Department of Commerce, where this is where the local office outside of Washington, D.C., you can actually trademark or get a patent. We, I do advise to have legal counsel on that, but you don't necessarily need that. At the Department of Commerce in Middletown, there are individuals that can help you through that process. Um, here at the U University of Connecticut, in our legal um, uh, department or where our, our law school, we do some pro bono work of helping individuals complete patent and trademark uh, submissions. Um, just have to contact our office and we will definitely put you in touch with our legal clinic. We also look at when you're doing a startup checklist, you have to look at the branding and what kind of business image you want to project. So that's something that you really want to look at competition at that point. And it's telling you, what do you want to be known for in the community? And I tell all my clients, first and foremost, you brand yourself first because you sell yourself first. If you go in front of a banker, go well, guess what? The banker doesn't know about the business. The banker wants to know you. So you are the brand. So before your business is becoming a household name, you will walk as the brand. It's like you hear people talk about the elevated speech. You are the brand. You're branding yourself. You're constantly telling people what you do or what product or service you have to offer. It's the easiest and cheapest marketing that you can imagine. And I think sometimes it's very overlooked. And then also you want to talk about business insurance. There's no business in America <laughs> that should be in business or is in business without liability insurance, workman's comp insurance, all right, to protect themselves, workers, and others that they may do business with. Very, very important to actually look at, all right? Also, I want to mention that the state of Connecticut has a um, portal, a resource portal that you can actually find. It's called, um, it's business, Dot ct gov. It'll cover a lot of this information that I just covered with you. You might want to go there. Um, I did mention to you uh, the state's other portal, uh, especially when it comes down to the Department of, of Revenue Services. That would be uh, portal ct gov, and then it would just uh, forward slash drs, and then forward slash business, and some of that information I just covered with with you will come up as well. Takeaways. And reminders of what we talked about and discussed today. Preparation is key. Uh, I can't stress it enough. Before starting, you want to access your personal business readiness. Very, very important. The more time you actually take educating yourself about your environment and what you want to do and preparing yourself, the more success you're going to have. It's very straightforward. It's like anything else that you've ever done in, in life. The more you put in, the more you're going to get out. Know that you have options based on your concept, your expertise, your experience. You can choose to become a business owner 
in many different ways. It's up to you. Understanding the market really matters. So before investing time and money, it's very important to understand your potential customers and competition. Very, very, I can't stress it enough. You know, I ask myself, how many restaurants can a particular area hold? Give you a case in point. If I am a pizza restaurant and there's already five pizza restaurants in a given, say, five mile radius, what is going to separate me, one, from my competition, and who is my potential, potential audience that I'm actually going after? Real serious matters that you really should take, think about before going into this type of endeavor. Let's also think about the numbers. They have to work for you. Whether you are self-financing or getting a loan, you wanna make sure you can make money. This is the reason why we're in business, to make money, all right? So, fail to plan, plan to fail. Very simple, but realistic concept. No matter what approach you take in creating a plan for your business, will help solidify concepts by having that action plan. We help you with that action plan. Every client that comes to our and we come up with a business uh, plan, almost like a customer bill of rights, that you agree to do X, we agree to help you with what you said you want, all right? That we help you through that by putting a plan because we don't want to fail. Compliance, knowing the permits and license, what you need. God forbid you, I had clients do this. I had one client about a year ago, wanted to do a food truck. Well, in the city of New Haven and its other municipalities, your food truck can only be a certain size. She was over the, the city limit by two feet. She would had to go to special zoning to get a special permit to allow her, even though she's already spent the money for the food truck and started to outfit it. But because she didn't look at the compliance of the of the city, she was she was out of compliance. Another case scenario. It's like they tell you before you dig, <laughs> make a call in business. It's the same principle. Before you open up your business, you really need to think about, is there any nuances in the particular city? Especially if I'm in a suburb, is that allowed, you know, to actually take place in that particular region? Certain contractors or builders get in trouble when they may buy a building, not realize that building may not be uh, commercially zoned for the use or that they want to use it for. And the city, I've seen the city and, uh, around the state come in and stop the work. Um, especially when you have like brownfields, you know, a brownfield is where you have a, a, a building or, or land that is contaminated, that needs to be cleaned up before you can do anything to it. You need special permissions when you deal with that, all right? So this would be, be mindful of Compliance. How we can help? Very simple. I told you before, we access capital. You know, you need money. We're the people to come to. You don't loan money, but we help prepare you for the next level, for that step. Financial analysis and cash flow management. If you are a startup on, on this call, um, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed that you are not an accountant or a CPA. We have proprietary software called the bottom line in our office where I can put together, my team can put together for you all the financial documents from the balance sheet to income statement to the cash flow statement that you will need to actually present to a bank. And it's free to you. You simply just have to ask that you need it. Market research. Like I said, we have Ibis World, we have Esri reports. This is free information to help you gather the market research information that you actually will need. It's something that every business and every business owner has to think about. Who 
and what is their market? Who's their customer and how do I tap into them? We're also gonna help you with marketing and social media training. You know, how do you do SEO, optimizing on, on Google and how do you do Facebook? You know, what does that all mean? You know, how do I, why is I go and look up something on the internet, why is that name always coming up to the top? Well, that's special optimization. We in our department show you have to do how to do that. We have um, particular three individuals on our team. That's they come from that world of marketing and social media. And we actually put on seminars and one on one trainings to actually help you with that. I've already talked about budget prepar preparation and forecasting. Once again, we walk you through that even for existing business. We have a, a, a piece of software called uh, the industrial CFO. I could like take your balance sheet and tell you exactly how you compare to your competitors in a regional or geographical location by industry. I can also tell you, because it's basic banking software, in essence, of looking at your balance sheet and telling you how healthy your company or your operations are doing. Very, very thought provoking software with that every CEO or CFO of a company would want to take a look at that type of information. We also get in, involved in export consulting. We're all international trade specialists here at the SPDC. But for your information, 94% of the world's economy is not in the United States. I'll say, I'll say it again, 94% of the world's economy is outside the United States. So all the corporations we see in America are fighting for 6% of the world's supply of dollars to be spent. But the majority of the dollars are around the world. We are a global economy. And when you think about your product or your service, think even on the onset as a startup, how you can take it globally, how you can reach beyond the shores of just America. Two of our bigger neighbors that we do business with aren't too far away. It's Canada and Mexico. So think out of the box when it comes to saying, hey, is this a possibility that I'm making some relish? This is a real client. She makes relish. She sold it down in the Bridgeport area, became successful. Well, who would know that Europe wanted it too? Canadians wanted it. Now she's sending it to six different countries around the world on a little idea that she just wanted to package something, bring it forth because it was a family recipe, but it worked. So think out of the box. Business valuation and, su and succession planning. One thing for businesses, we should always think about our exit. There, there's no better time, whether it's the beginning, or during the middle, or if you're thinking in your final twilight years, what is my business worth? And what is my succession plan or for me to, to retire or to pass it on? Am I gonna pass it on to my employees? Am I gonna give it to my children? Or am I gonna sell it? These are real questions that you really should think about. Of course, we talked a lot about the startup assistance. Um, we serve probably over 160 startup businesses every single year. Uh, we, we work with about 2,400 clients um, throughout the year, and we help around $57 million um, between private equity and debt. Um, myself in particular, I, I oversee and I head the capital team um, that helps you with that $57 million. That is my, 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 my staff of six individuals and myself. We work directly with you when it comes down to the capital and what you need. We also talk about the business disaster or disruption preparation. This is key, because before COVID, when I would say disaster, we would think like Hurricane Sandy or a major disaster. Um, we would think about 9-11, um, when New Yorkers had to go to New Jersey, and that's where their servers were, and they, were, they had the information on the cloud. Now, with the disruption of COVID, we talk about the pivot in business uh, disasters or disruption. There's a major disruption around our country and it's affecting our economy. We talk about what is that pivot? 
what is the next move? This is where we know that probably the pandemic is going to be here until the vaccine and even a little bit beyond. How do you sustain yourself as a business going forward? Who is going to help you make the determination um, of what's next? Is it the best move to even stay in business? That's a reality that certain businesses have to deal with right now. And where if they do decide to stay in business, where are they going to get the help? So we talk about loan structuring um, in depth. One thing you understand about that, we don't let you go alone. We have banking relationships all over the country. Um, I deal with every bank here in the state of Connecticut, um, whether it's the micro lending world or a regular commercial bank, we have relations with them all. We tend to pre-sell you to whatever lender we take you to. Because, because we have a relationship with them, we work with them constantly. And so we like to make the right recommendations and not set you up for failure. Uh, there's also resource referrals that we get involved to as well. So anything and everything, we're definitely here for you. Lastly, how do you contact us? Register, 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 no cost business advising, ctsbdc.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at CTSBDC. And guys, and I want to just thank you for your time. You know, if there's any questions, we'll be happy to take them for the rest of the time. Turn, turn it over to you, Jason. Hi, Jason Capola here. Um, great job, excellent presentation. Um, sorry that I didn't have uh, more control as a moderator. Um, but uh, if there are any questions out there, um, you know, please put them in the chat room or raise your hand, and I'm sure they'd be more than um, gladly to answer them for you. Hey, Jason. Uh, yes, I'm here. Yeah, you, you all said I just caught that last bit where you were looking for maybe some tech support. Yeah, so I wasn't selected as a moderator um, in this um, session like I was at the 10 o'clock. So I didn't have any control to do any record, stop, start the recording, stop the recording, or even end the meeting when this is over. Okay, all right, I can uh, take care of that. You were selected as guest of honor, by the way. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I love that. Um, hopefully my sessions, um, the rest of the day, I, hopefully those, uh, those links that I was sent are correct. I'm not sure what happened here. Roger. Oops. Oops. Jay, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, okay. I, I thought I closed you out. That, that's oh, a, uh, yeah. I'm good. All right. I don't wonder if anyone had any question or there's a, a, a hand raised. I don't see anything. And even that question, even that if I didn't cover something, you want to ask um, something about my department, um, we feel free to do so. Um, oh, I, I do have a question, and I don't know if you can answer this or not. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody asked in the other session about how do they share um, your PowerPoint slides or even these recordings? I don't know if anybody knows that answer to that question. Yeah, that's a good question. I, Jason, I was going to ask that same thing um, because I would want to, one, I know this is being recorded, so I don't know what the veteran department is actually going to do and where they're going to house this. I, I have no problem sending our, our PowerPoint presentation um, over to them so they can they can push put it up there. Um, I think it was a circle back. Yeah, because somebody um, 
actually put up a question about how are you able to send the PowerPoint slides to the attendees. Oh, Joe has his hand up. Okay. Right. Yeah, we're going to post uh, the sessions, the recordings on YouTube and uh, try to get them on our website. So that'll give you the visual of what was presented as far as the hard PowerPoint copy um, that could just be sent to myself, joseph.deneo at ct.gov, and we'll take care of uh, distributing and pushing that out. Yeah, that unfortunately, be, uh, the first 20 minutes of this session wasn't recorded. There was a technical issue, but we got the last 20 minutes or so. Okay. Roger. Okay. I know, hey Megan, I know Megan, you're on this call. Yes, I'm here. Hey Megan, can you um, coordinate that with, with Joseph uh, with our PowerPoint for today? Yeah, we don't normally share our slides, but uh, I think it should be okay. Okay, thanks. Well, I have about 10 of 12. Um, yeah, there's, it's about 1150. Are there any other questions out there from the field of guests? If not, I mean, I suggest we could probably end the session. If anybody else is opposed to that, just let me know. But I think they told us to try to wrap it up at 10 of the hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> OK, it's uh, Angela Tates. Are you guys still not able to are, are you seeing the stop recording, Jay, or? No, I don't have any controls over anything right okay. now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead.